everyone, Sean Frangella here for MotionTutorials.net with a new video going over everything you get with any of the 360 Environment Map Pro packs and some tips on everything you can do with these packs. So if you haven't checked it out already, 360 Environment Maps Pro are sets of environment maps and project sets of environment maps for Cinema 4D and project templates to work with them available in the store at motionutorials.net slash store. With these packs, you can get different sets of Cinema 4D assets. Right now I got building interiors, urban city, and this super city pack that comes with both, as well as some bonus maps. So in this super city pack, for example, there's 75 high resolution maps. And in this video, we're gonna go over everything you can do with it. So if you're really curious about what you can do with these, or if you just purchase any of the packs, this will be a great starting point to understand everything you can do with it to get it right into your projects and workflow. So after you download the product and unzip everything, this is everything you'll get. So there's a lot of stuff in here and let's dive into everything you get. The first things are these boring readme and license files if you need those. The first folder is this example renders. So this includes a high resolution render of every single lighting setup. If you wanna use this as a guide to understand what each one will look like without having to open up the projects and bother with everything. You can take a look at a render of every single setup that's part of the pack. So it's a good little guide to get an idea of everything you can do and what the lighting is gonna look like for each environment map. Next are these three folders with the actual photography of the environment map. So this is what makes up the bones of these packs. There's 2K, 4K, and 8K versions of the same environment maps in each folder. So if you wanna go all the way up to 8K, which is this folder, you can use those. And if you're really close on an object, you'll still get super crisp and clear reflections. Or if you wanna save on render time, you can use the 4K or even the 2K versions. Next is this After Effects folder for Cinema 4D Lite users, where you can use that as a starting point. I'll get into that a little later. And your main starting point, if you wanna use the templates that are included with the product, is this C4D folder which includes three Cinema 4D files, as well as a text folder that has copies of the 8K maps in it. So let's open this starter file main. So here we have a template file and I've set up materials for each one of the maps, named it, organized it, and put everything in alphabetical order. So you can really save some time with not having to recreate these every time on your own. You can just drop your project into these template files or copy the assets into your project. And if we jump out of our camera view and take a look at what we got here, I have some example objects that are in this example objects group that are just a bunch of different basic geometric shapes like spheres and cubes and cones and some bumpy little platonic objects. So you can get an idea of what each environment map is gonna look like. And on the entire group of that, there's just this chrome material so you can see the reflection. There's also this basic studio sweep object that I set up with a basic slightly reflective material on it just to get an idea and all these basic materials that I used to texture that differently. So if you wanted to get an idea of a different color studio, you could just drag one of the materials and hold command or control and swap it in and it's going to replace that studio background. There's a compositing tag on that too to not be seen by reflection. And if we jump back into our camera view, that's so we can take a look at our reflection in our environment maps without seeing the reflection of the ground. So it's a good little trick to use and you could copy paste that into your projects too if you need something like that. There's also a camera just to have something to look through and a simple area light on the side just so we could get some shadows in these example renders. Now the main object that makes all this work is the sky object with one of these materials on it and this compositing tag. So let me do an area render on just part of this. And how all this works is if you're dropping your assets into this project file, all you have to do is pick one of the environment maps, hold command or control and drag it onto the material on this sky object. And it's gonna swap out the material for that sky object. And that's what you'll see in all of your reflections for the entire scene. 
Now, if we turn off this Studio Suite background, you notice that you don't see the environment in the background. You only see it in the reflections. And that's this compositing tag on the sky object. And I've unchecked scene by camera. So if you ever want to set this up on your own, let me delete that compositing tag. And now we will see that in the background. All you'll need to do is right click Cinema 4D tag compositing and check on it scene by camera. So you could set this up from scratch or we could just use the starter file as a basis. Now say this is taking way too long to render and we want to use one of the 4K or 2K versions of that environment map. Right now we're using this factory floor and if we wanted to swap in one of the different resolution versions, all we got to do is go to our color channel, click the dots to find a file. And then we can go into our 4K or 2K folders, find that corresponding image. So I'll get our factory floor, click open, and we can copy in the file into our local directory if we want. You don't have to, but if you're swapping assets between different people or studios, it's a good thing to do. And then we'll be using the 2K version. Now the benefit of that is you can see it's gonna render a lot quicker. So if you're not doing something where the camera's super up close, it might be useful to use the 4K or 2K versions, and that's why I included them, to give you the flexibility of quality and render time. Now, say you already have a project and you don't want to bring everything into this template file. You want to bring the assets into your own project. How do we do that? Well, there's a couple ways you can do that. It's super simple. Let's say I have this other project open with some text and materials. If I go back to my template file, which I can do by going to Window, and finding my file or pressing V and going to projects. That's a good little shortcut. And I'll go to my startup file. All I have to do is copy that sky object and paste it into my project. I can copy that file if I need to. And there you can see it's going to show up in all of my reflections. Now, if you really wanted to, you could build this from scratch. Let's talk about how to do that and how you could recreate this setup. I'm going to go up here to my environment objects. I'm going to get a sky. Then I'd want to make a new material down here by double clicking. I'll call this factory. I'll open that up. I can turn off reflectance and for color, I'm going to locate any of my environment maps. So let's grab that factory floor 2k, open it, copy it if we want it. And then I'm going to drag that material onto the sky object and it's going to show up as a sphere all around my world and show up in my objects reflections. Now, if I don't want to see it in the background, I just need to add that compositing tag. I can do that by right clicking on the sky object and going to cinema 4d tags, compositing and uncheck scene by camera. And that's all we got to do. So it is a lot quicker to just swap in the one you want and copy paste it into your existing project. But if you want to be fancy and build it on your own, you can do that too. Now, let's say we want this to appear blurry in our reflections. We don't want it to be so sharp. Well, we can actually do that all inside of Cinema 4D. You don't need to bring it into Photoshop and blur it or anything. Let's take a look at this train station one as an example. I really like the look of this one. But maybe we don't want it so sharp to where you can make everything out. Maybe we want it a little blurred. Well, all we need to do is open up that material. And below where the image is loaded, there's a blur offset. And we can blur that. And then it's going to appear blurry in all of our reflections. Now, this is really useful to do beyond using reflectance or reflections in our material editor because it's going to render a lot quicker than actual blurry reflections. And we can turn up or down the blur amount and it's just blurring that image. So it's a really good way to work and it's going to save a ton of render time. Now, say we wanted to change that blurriness on all of these. We could actually, with our material editor open, select all of our environment map materials by holding shift and selecting them all and type in blur amount on one of them. And now if we take a look at all of them, they're all gonna be equally blurred. Well, what if you don't even wanna take the time to do that? That's what one of these other files is for. If you look in that project folder, there's a starter file blurry for each pack. And if I open that up, that's a project file with that already done for you. If we open any of these up, it's all of the same environment maps, but blurriness set to five. So it'll help save you some time if you want to grab the blurry starter file and work from there. Let's go back to our main one. 
and I'll take off that blur offset so we get back our sharp reflections. Now, say we wanna adjust the look of this a little more, maybe we don't want the color so saturated or maybe we wanna push the contrast or we want it black and white. Well, we don't need to bring it into Photoshop or anything to do that either. We could do all that right in Cinema 4D. If we click this little arrow next to texture and select filter, it's gonna drop that material into this filter channel. If I open that up, it basically has all the color correction functions that you'd want. So we could actually take out all the saturation if we want it to be black and white. And you can see how that's gonna change everything. We could push the contrast, bring up the gamma if we wanna make it brighter, and do everything right in here without needing to copy the image, bring it into Photoshop or anything like that. You also could push the hue if you wanna get some different color looks. And that's looking pretty cool. It's pretty neat that we could take this train station, adjust it, blur it a bit, change the hue, saturation, contrast, and we get something totally different. That's pretty cool looking. It looks kind of like the Matrix train station or something like that, all within Cinema 4D. And the way to do that, again, is on the color channel for that material. We just click this little arrow, select filter, click to jump into that, and here's all our tools. So you could do that on any or all of the materials in these example files as well. Now, say we want to use this, but we don't want it to appear in the reflections of every single object. Maybe we just want to use that in one object. Well, we could do that too. Let me just delete this sky, and now we won't see anything because there's nothing to reflect in our scene. So I'll just delete that chrome material too from those objects so they're back to basic objects. Well, if we drag any of these onto any of these objects, like this sphere in the center, it's not really working how we would think. It's just mapping that material onto that object. Well, if we want it to appear as reflections, we can open up any of these materials. I'll uncheck color, and then I can grab that same little arrow, and I'm gonna copy channel, turn on environment, and then I can go to the little arrow and paste, drag it onto that sphere, and now if we render, we can see it's coming in as reflections. We get that nice Fresnel along the edge, and it's only happening in that object. And the great part of using that environment tab on a per object basis is we could build it as a bigger part of a material. So we could check back on color, clear that out, and maybe make it a different color. So let's go like a dark blue, and we could tone down that environment map so we only see a little bit of it. Maybe we add a bump and get some noise and just change this to a different noise and tone that down. And again, the idea with this is that we're making a totally custom or existing material and we could load one of these environment maps into just this tab so we could see different little reflections and details in our object. Now, say you have an existing material. Let's say we're actually working with one of these floor materials and I wanna do that same thing. I wanna load one of these environment maps as part of this material. Well, all we have to do for that is check on environment, click to locate one of our files. So I'll grab any of these 2K images. Let's try this lounge and I can go to open, copy it if I need to. And now you can see that it's going to use that in addition to the other channels. So same thing, we could tone it down if we only wanna see a little bit of it. And we could do the same thing with other objects. So maybe this other sphere is blue, so we'll drag in this blue material, open that up, grab a different environment map, open that one, and we turn down that brightness. And then we can use different maps on different objects. So there's a lot you can do with this pack. It's really versatile. If that seemed like too many steps, well, don't worry, there's another file I set up with that exact setup. If we look at our files and go to this starter file multi-object and open that up, that's what I basically set up for you is a bunch of different environment maps set to different objects using the environment map channel with the sky object turned off and a different one on each object. So you can use this file to take a look at how this is set up without having to go through all those steps yourself. And if we quickly take a look at our render settings on all of these templates, I've set them up at 1920 by 1080 with ambient occlusion checked on. 
and using the physical render in Cinema 4D, you could also use the standard render. Things won't look that different, but it's good to know that those render settings are there if you want to change them. And now, what if I'm not a Cinema 4D Studio user, I'm an After Effects user, and I use Cinema 4D Lite? Well, if we take a look at those project assets, there's an AE folder with a similar setup, but using After Effects and Cinema 4D Lite files all the way back down to After Effects CC. So if we open up that After Effects file, I've set up an After Effects project file with those same Cinema 4D files all set up and prepped, and there's compositions set up for each of those with the Cineware effect making everything work. So Cinema 4D Lite started being part of After Effects in version CC. So if you have something earlier like CS6, it wasn't there and this wouldn't work because it didn't exist yet. But as long as you have CC, CC 2014 or CC 2015 or any future versions, it'll all work. And if we want to open up any of these files, so let's open up that main starter file, which we can do by going to edit, edit original or pressing command E and it's going to launch Cinema 4D Lite. We can close this. We don't need the physical render and these files are set up using the standard render for C40 Lite. And you can see everything is exactly the same. The only difference if I open up my render settings is it's using the standard render, which is part of Cinema 4D Lite. And everything is exactly the same. So you have your same materials down here for your environment maps that you can use for your projects. Let's close this down and say you're making your own Cinema 4D Lite project file, which you could do by file new max on Cinema 4D Lite file. I'll just call this test. And let's say we had our own scene. You could use the maps in that same exact way by either copying and pasting them or doing things like loading them into the environment tab and grabbing any of those. And we could drag it onto our object or use that same sky object. So everything in the video up to this point that I talked about earlier works exactly the same if you're in Cinema 4D Lite. It's all the same assets. There's nothing that's not included in Cinema 4D Lite that you need. You can use it all in the exact same way. If you just wanted to use the starter files, just use it in this After Effects AE folder and you could pop open the After Effects file and here's our Link Cinema 4D Lite files. And you can do everything I talked about. You're not missing out on anything if you're a Cinema 4D Lite user in After Effects. So there's a ton you can do with 360 Environment Maps Pro. You can use it to show up in reflections for your full scene. You can use it as part of existing materials. You can use that environment tab. There's a ton you can do with it. And I did everything I could to do a lot of the work and set up for you so you don't have to spend any time bumbling around in Cinema 4D with anything. You can just use those template files and you can grab the maps in 2K, 4K or 8K. There's a ton you can do with this stuff and I tried to make it as affordable as I possibly could so you can get any of the packs and you can even save if you want to get a bundle of packs. You can save 20% and you get some bonus maps that are only included in the bundles like the Super City pack. So if you get that one, you'll actually get 75 maps and you'll save a lot rather than buying each pack separately. So be sure to check them out in the online store at motiontutorials.net slash store or clicking the link in the description. I'm really excited about these new products. I think you could do a lot with them and it's really easy to use and really easy to set up. So be sure to check that out in the store. Let me know what you guys think of the new products. And if there's any other types of environments you guys want to see, I'm going to be making a lot more 360 environment map pro packs with different locations, times of day, settings, and all sorts of stuff. So if there's some ideas you guys are looking for new packs for it, let me know and I'll get working on it. Thanks for watching. I hope you like the new products and I'll see you at the next video.